Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be talking about self-adjoint linear operators and we'll be representing it in terms of its spectral family. So let's build up on the concept of representing the given operator T in terms of its projections. So let's see how we can further simplify the results and reach on to representing the spectral properties for this operator T here. Right. So here, let's suppose that for any real lambda. So what is lambda? Lambda is the given eigenvalue. Uh, instead of using this projections P1, P2 up to Pn, what we can do now here is we can use the sum of these projections. So that means we can define another operator which we are calling by E lambda. That is nothing but the sum of all the projections which are occurring before this lambda. So that means whenever we have the eigenvalue lambda j less than the given lambda, given defined lambda, then we add up all those projections. So what do you mean by that? You mean that if you define E lambda 1, lambda 1 corresponds to the first and the smallest eigenvalue for the given operator T or the spectral value, right? So then you could write this E lambda 1 as P1 e lambda 2 as p1 plus p2, e lambda 3 as p1 plus p2 plus p3 and you keep on doing like this, you have e lambda n as p1 plus p2 up to pn. So now this is what? This is a one parameter family of projections. So what is the parameter here? The parameter here is the given lambda. So this represents the parameter and what is this? This is nothing but the spectral uh, value for the given operator t, right? So from this equation 7 here, which if where we have defined E lambda as the sum of projections, right? We see that for any lambda, the operator E lambda is nothing but the projection of H, the given Hilbert space, onto a subspace, which we are defining by V lambda, which spans all those xj for which lambda j is less than equal to lambda. So that means if you define some lambda here corresponding to this lambda uh, because you know you you have defined your lambda 1 less than equal to lambda 2 less than equal to lambda 3 and so on up to lambda n right this is how you have defined your eigenvalues now suppose i am uh, talking about this lambda 3 your lambda is nothing but your lambda 3 so whichever eigenvalue that is smaller than that so in this case you have lambda 1 and lambda 2 smaller than lambda 3 so for that you would have a subspace V lambda which would contain the eigenvectors which corresponding to lambda 1 and lambda 2. And what are those? You have x1 and x2. So this V lambda would be the space which is spanned by these two eigenvectors here. Right? So obviously if lambda is less than equal to mu, suppose you have lambda as equal to lambda 3 and you have mu as equal to lambda 5. So your uh, v lambda would be x1 and x2 and your v mu what would be that? It would contain x1, x2, x3 and x4. Why? Because these are the eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 and lambda 4. Why? Because all these lambda uh, 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 they are smaller than lambda 5 which is our mu right so you see clearly that v lambda is contained in the space v mu right so this is one thing and moreover when we take the sum of the projections so you already know that summation pj that is equal to the identity projection this is known from the previous video we have seen this thing over here right when you add up all the projections it is nothing but the identity operator so therefore when you add up all the projections they give us the identity operator and when you have only uh, when uh, when we are we have we do not have any eigenvalue in that case this give uh, give us the zero operator so that means when we increase a lambda from lambda 1 to lambda and in a positive sense through r so it uh, shifts from the zero operator to the identity operator and keep on growing in between these two operators. So what do you mean by that mathematically? Uh, so I'll be telling you this over here and moreover the growth occurs 
when uh, we, uh, these are the discrete values so that means we are only talking about lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and so on we are not taking any value which is lying in between these values so this growth would occur so here the operator would be z uh, the zero operator here we would have the identity operator and in between we would have certain operators which is the sum of projections lying in between the zero operator and the identity operator right and these growth would occur only at lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda three and nothing uh, and not in between these things right and second thing e lambda that would remain unchanged for that value of lambda which is not the eigenvalue of t so whichever uh, we have uh, whichever value is there in between or which, which is not the eigenvalue for that e lambda would not change why because we are not adding any projection there why because that do not correspond to any eigenvalue so using these properties we have a rough definition for this e lambda what is that here we have this definition that lambda is less than if lambda is less than equal to mu in that case e lambda e mu is equal to e mu e lambda that is equal to e lambda but how this thing is true uh, if you remember you have uh, this thing that if lambda 1 is connected with lambda 2 then in that case p lambda 1 p lambda 2 that is equal to p lambda 2 p lambda 1 that is equal to p lambda 1 right so using this property which we have already studied in the previous uh, theorem using this property we have this thing and moreover for the first eigenvalue for the first eigenvalue when our lambda is less than this lambda 1 this the sum is nothing but the zero operator and for the last eigenvalue that means whenever lambda is greater than lambda n so in that case your e lambda what would be that it would be uh, it would be the sum of all the projections so it would be p lambda 1 plus p lambda 2 plus p lambda 3 and so on up to p lambda n why because this lambda is greater than lambda n and you know the sum of all these projections that is the identity operator so that means whenever we move from uh, the lower eigenvalue to the higher eigenvalue we are moving from the zero operator to the identity operator and moreover when we are taking this limit as tending to lambda in a positive sense from the right hand side then this thing limit uh, mu going from lambda plus 0 to e mu this thing would be e lambda only why because you are approaching this lambda from the positive sense so because we are not taking any value in between so it would just be e lambda here right so based on these properties we may define a new definition which is nothing but the spectral family of the given operator or we could say we could decompose unity by unity we mean the identity operator right we are able to write this identity operator as the sum of uh, different projections right where this projections they vary from 1 to n so if we may say that we are either decomposing unity or we are defining the spectral family corresponding to some given operator so a real spectral family or decomposition of unity is that is a one parameter family right this is a one parameter family of projections which is defined on a hilbert space h of any dimension which depends on real parameter lambda so we have defined some family by this e right it contains all those e lambdas of the projections such that we have these properties with us so what are these properties whenever we have lambda less than lam mu lambda and mu both are the eigenvalues right or the spectral values in that case e lambda is less than equal to e mu if that is so if the projection p1 is less than equal to the projection p2 in that case you would have p1 p2 is equal to p2 p1 right that is equal to p1 this was the property that we have earlier studied now using this thing here we have e lambda less than equal to e mu and hence we have this property writing uh, written by the equation 9 moreover if we approach this lambda from the negative sense right from the left hand side so uh, and from the leftmost side which is nothing but minus infinity so we would have a zero operator here uh, in that case e lambda would be what if we are approaching this from the positive sense so this is what 
this is e lambda and uh, if we are taking lambda less than lambda 1 so in that case this e lambda is nothing but the identity operator right so using that thing if we have uh, if we are writing it over this vector x so this would give you a zero number right in a similar fa fashion if we are taking this limit from positive infinity so then when we applied it on to this x we would have x only why because it is i x what is i i is the identity operator so these are the same results now we are talking it in terms whenever we are applying it on to some vector so right so this is the zero number why because we are applying the operator zero on to the vector x which is nothing but zero right and the uh, e equation 11 it tells us that whenever we are taking e lambda plus zero x so it would be e mu lambda plus zero e mu x and what is that it is nothing but e lambda why because there are no values which are lying in between lambda 1 and lambda 2 we are not taking those why because we are only taking the discrete eigenvalues here so here this is a real spectral family so we can regard this spectral family by sub mapping how we can do that we have we are taking some real number what is that real number that real number is the given or the obtained eigen value or the spectral value of the given operator t right this we have this is some real number now this real number is being mapped onto some operator what is that operator this is the sum of projections right and what is projection that is a bounded linear operator if you see what is a projection that is a bounded linear operator if that is so th this comes from the family which contains all the bounded linear operator defined on the hilbert space h to the hilbert space h right so we are defining the spectral family as a mapping which is uh, taken from the real space to the space of all the bounded linear operators defined on the given Hilbert space. So that means if we use the equations again that we have defined here in equation 7 these equations now we wanted to define what is p1 what is p2 what is p3 and up to what is pn. So what is that in terms of e lambdas so it is p1 is e lambda 1 p2 is e lambda 2 minus e lambda 1 and similarly your pj is e lambda j minus e lambda j minus 1 where we you can vary j right just rewriting all these equation in terms of e so here you see this e lambda it remains same whenever we are in between these two eigenvalues why because there is no eigenvalues in between these eigenvalues and we are taking the discrete eigenvalues so that means your pj could be written as e lambda j minus e lambda j minus zero what is that this is approaching e lambda j from the negative side from the left hand side so you can now write pj so remember you have written your x as the sum of pj x now we are writing pj as nothing but e, e lambda j minus e lambda j minus 0 so you could write this pj as e lambda j minus e lambda j minus 0 right so what is that you uh, again you can apply t here so you could apply t here so you could apply t here so what what would be that it would be t lambda t of x so that would be lambda j e lambda j minus e lambda j minus 0 of x right how that is so we could use the previous equations so using the equations here equation number 4 right ok so using this thing here let us see what do we have so we have obtained our t of x as the summation lambda j e lambda j minus e lambda j minus 0 of x so this thing now if we drop x so we are able to write the operator t in terms of these spectral families e lambda j's right how we 
furthermore you can write this thing as what is this thing this is a little deviation in the operator e lambda j so you could write this little deviation by writing this delta symbol over here delta e j so you have this lambda j as such and the whole of this thing could be written as delta of e lambda j so this is the spectral representation of the given self adjoint linear operators t whenever we have the eigen values as defined as lambda 1 less than la lambda 2 up to less than lambda n in this order and moreover our given hilbert space is n dimensional finite hilbert space so for the case of finite hilbert space we have of obtained for finite hilbert spaces we have obtained the representation of the given operator which is self adjoint linear operator t in terms of in terms of spectral family which is nothing but the sum of projections now we'll be using it for the case when we have infinite hilbert spaces right so that well that is it for this video thank you for watching